Hello Amiga fans, this is Randy again, back with another piece of software we used back in the day. As I told you in one of my previous videos, I used to be a music teacher. My wife was too, and we used MIDI sequencing software a lot. We used it to accompany groups, we used it to rehearse with, and one of those pieces of software that we used a, a lot was Tiger Cub by Dr. T's. Now you say Dr. T's. That was a piece of software written for the Atari, and it was. Atari was a very neat computer and had a built-in MIDI interface. But it wasn't that much hassle to get a MIDI interface for your Amiga. One of those that was available was the Golden Hawk. And we had a couple of these. It was a very versatile piece. Had a few outs, a through out, and an in. Switchable. You could actually use your serial port if you weren't using the golden hawk with your switches on here so we use the wheels off of this thing recording and uh accompanying uh one of the devices that we used to use was a a roland roland sound module general midi this is not a roland this is a suzuki but it has the same general midi sound bank in it that is to say there's like 128 sounds and they're located in standard places so that guitars and drums, which are on channel 10, and pianos are all the same from machine to machine. This was a standard device by the MIDI people, GM, General MIDI. That's what this device is. We're going to be using that today, and we're going to show you how to do some really basic MIDI sequencing with Tiger Cub. So here we go. Our keyboard of choice today is the FL Key 37, fairly standard piece and available in most music stores. It is a modern USB MIDI keyboard, but it also has a standard 5-pin MIDI DIN output. You can power it via USB with just a little wall brick. Uh, we're going to use that as our keyboard, and we're going to run that MIDI out to the MIDI in on the Golden Hawk and then that will come out to the MIDI in on the general music sound module. Pretty basic. If you've never been exposed to MIDI, you might not quite understand what we're doing, so hopefully that'll be helpful to you. Let's uh, open up Tiger Cub and get a look at the interface here. Running this on a 1200, just a bare bones 1200, floppies only. Booting it with a 1.3 floppy, that is my backup of Tiger Cub and uh, that way I know my libraries and everything are assigned. Now when you get to the beginning screen of Tiger Cub you can actually set how many events you're planning on recording and adjust the amount of memory that's assigned to your events. So we've got two megs here on this bare bones 1200. We're gonna roll this up so we have a few more events but not that many. Dr. T's wrote some very fine MIDI sequencing and transcription softwares back in the day, and they've merged into other companies today. Their technology broke a lot of ground, a lot of ground for MIDI people. Okay, when you uh, want to make a sequence with uh, Tiger Cub, you got to type in how many measures you want to record. In this case, we're going to try to use 16. Hopefully, I can play something clean for 16 measures. Over here on the edit button, we're going to click that. We go to the edit the edit screen, I should say. We're going to set our channel to channel two, and we want program thirty four, which is a bass sound. Come back here. We're going to set our quantize to eighth notes. You have a left and right button. You can take it down to quarter note triplets, eighth notes, eighth note triplets. Just use the side arrows, okay? We're on record channel two. With the button red, we're ready to record.
Okay, we're going to take a couple uh, minutes to look at the edit page, the edit tracks. This is uh, sitting on a blank track, which is track one. The bass sound that we just recorded, which is on channel two, and should be set to program 34. Let's get that set. has a piano roll type editor okay now you can zoom in and out and in some of these places I don't know if I played real clean but I think there's one of these I clammed on and you'll see a stacked note if I can find it let's just play it let's use the space bar to start and stop jumps off from the beginning every time you do. Okay, so I think what I did was I held on too long on some of these notes and they overlap notes that are behind them with the quantization. So let's see if we can change that by highlighting them and running them editor on the quantization. We'll zoom out. We'll take this box tool We'll just highlight them all. I believe in edit. We can say we want to do this a little different. And I think that should help us. Let's see if that cleans some of that up. So it cleaned up some of it by better quantizing the end of the notes. There are some that are still just a little bit goofy. So we can take this and shorten the duration. It's a little length editor. So it doesn't hang over so far. And we could do this on any, any note in here. Select it, slide it with the finger. Yeah, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get the idea. You can edit down to the note. So you see how that edit screen works. Now I'm going to do a little thing back on the uh, recording screen. We're going to move to record channel 10. And suddenly you should get drum sounds. In general MIDI, if you're using channel 10, you're using drums. The drums are laid out on the keyboard uh, in specific locations, and you'll get used to that as you get to use in general MIDI. F sharp is a hi-hat. D is a snare drum. E is a different snare drum. Bass drum is a C. Now we can move those if we transpose. We're going to stay right here. And we're going to start with the bass drum and the snare drum. One. how we jump to the next track to record. Now I'm recording hi-hat. My bass drum and snare drum are on the other track. If I go open hi-hat on the B flat and back to F sharp, it cuts it off. Sure you don't confuse channels and tracks notice we're on track 5 we can record channel 10 on any of those tracks but MIDI channel 10 is your drum channel okay the track that can be anything we could record 
channel 10 on track 1 if we wanted to. It just happens to be where we are, it's 4 and 5 today. Okay. And now we're going to go back to, I don't know, let's go back up to channel 1, which we're going to record on track 6. And let's find a sound we like. Oh, we're getting there. Octave button. Oh, let's see what that does. You get the idea. I'm not a great keyboard player. <laughs> but hopefully you got a better understanding of one of those pieces of software we used back in the day. This is Tiger Cub from Dr. T's. And uh, we used the wheels off of it. It was a great little piece of software. We never used it with the internal instruments. First of all, our Amigas were small. They didn't have enough RAM to hold those instruments. But you can record with internal instruments with this sequencer. I never messed with it, and frankly, I didn't find much use for it. We always had general MIDI modules, and it worked great that way. So, like I say, the Amiga was ahead of its time, and in this case, it was at least equal with the Atari. And we really appreciate you watching, so enjoy your Amiga. <laughs>